Hi, in this video, we're going to cover how to create beautiful icons for your application. We're going to cover how to create iOS icons and as well adaptive icons for Android. And as well, how to create a beautiful splash screen icon that is compatible with light and dark mode. For icons, we're going to cover light, dark and tinted icons. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna be using Figma. Figma, it's a design tool that is going to allow you to create these images and assets for your icon and splash screen. So we have created a template that you can check out down here in the description. Just click on it and then click on open in Figma. And here we have the template. So now we can start actually designing our icon. So let's start with iOS. So for X publications, the icon has to be 1024 by 1024. And in this case here, we have the three variants, light, dark, and tinted. So if this is the first time that you are designing, don't worry, Figma is actually very intuitive. And the first thing that I want to do here is just go ahead and press R. This is going to create a rectangle. And I want to show you that as soon as I start, uh, you know, creating stuff inside this icon, I can see the preview down here. So for example, if I come here on the right and start changing the color, we can have a nice preview of how this is going to look. All right, so I'm going to delete that. And actually I was, uh, doing some stuff before um, this lesson. So let's go back and I'm going to come here and paste my example down here. So I want to show you guys how I actually created this icon. And a pro tip is that I use SF symbols. So for those who don't know, San Francisco symbols, uh, basically it's a collection of icons that you can use for iOS. And in this case, because my application, it's about splitting a bill. So the icon that I'm going to be using, it's arrow triangle. So if you're not a designer like me, using one of the San Francisco icons for your app icon is going to, you know, save you a lot of time. Uh, so from here, the cool thing about this application is that we can copy the image as an SVG, as you can see here. So I'm going to just go ahead and press copy and then go back to my Figma. So to show you how I got here, let's use the template up here. Once you have an icon, you can select the main icon and just paste it in there. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit, press K and make this big. Now I'm going to change the color on the right. I'm going to, you know, select just black. Now you, you gotta make sure that you are selecting actual vector for that. So on the left, I'm going to select the vector and then change this to be black. All right, so now let's zoom out and see how this looks. Okay, and the preview looks pretty nice. Now, if you want to remove the grid, what you can do is just select the icon and on the left on the icon, just go ahead and press on the app icon grid and press on this little eye icon. This is going to remove the grid. And actually we have to do this once we're ready to export this icon. So from here, it's just a matter of playing around with your design. Okay, so after I uh, you know, moved around my icon, this is how it looks on light mode. Now in iOS 18, we actually have three variants of icons. We have dark and we can specify a well, as well a tinted icon. So for dark, you can select here the uh, dark icon and change the background if you, if you want to, for example, if you want super dark or just, you know, if you want red, just go ahead and change it and you can see the preview on the right. Uh, but I'm just going to leave this one so that we can see the difference between the tinted and dark. Um, but yeah, this is basically how it looks. I just changed the color of the main square background and my vector. And finally, we have a tinted icon. This is a new feature on iOS 18. And the way it works is as follows. So here I have actually an example. Uh, when the user selects a tinted icon, they can actually choose the color. So in those cases, we need to have our icon be prepared for different colors. And in this case, Apple recommends that we use a white color so that um, then they can overwrite the color easily. Something important is that black pixels will not be tinted. So if we set the background to be black, that means that the tinted is going to just be the vector in our case. Now let's see this example of the home application. Um, you can see that this is the design and once you apply the tinted color and if the user choose the green, this is how the icon is going to look. Now they also mentioned that if you use a vertical gradient, um, it's going to look good in most cases. So if you want to apply the gradients, like they said, you can actually come here to this example and select this little circle. So if you want to use this uh, gradient color, um, you can select this circle. And then on the left, you can see that I'm selecting this ellipse. And then on the right, I can see the um, design or the linear gradient that is being applied to this circle. So I'm going to select it in here and say, 
uh, command C to copy. And then you can go to your icon and select the vector. And on the field, I'm going to just paste this in here. Then I can remove my uh, background color. And this is how it looks. Okay, and I think I'm happy with my three variants. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Android. So once you have your icon, it's actually pretty easy. You can just come here and copy your vector or icon. And then let's move on to the Android adaptive icon. Let's do the same. Select the square and paste your icon. Now, as you notice on Android, uh, we are like we have like a constraint and we have to set our icon within this circle that you can see here. But the image size still has to be 1024 by 1024. So yeah, let's go ahead and center this on screen and press K to scale this proportionally and then option shift and start decreasing the size of this icon. Okay, so this is how it looks. Let's go ahead and see the preview. And you notice that we have to fit this icon within the circle. And I think that looks okay. So I'm going to zoom out and see how this looks. Cool. Now in this case, we can do the same. We can select the icon. So on the left, I'm going to select um, this background and just hide it. Now remember the adaptive icon doesn't need to have a background. Okay, and I think that is good enough for my Android adaptive icon. So let's go ahead and move on to the splash screen. So I'll just copy my iOS icon and then come to the splash screen section. We don't need to specify a background for this image. So let's go ahead and do basically the same. This has to be an icon and we can change the background dynamically on the configuration. So this is how it looks. As you can see, this is going to be used in dark mode. So what I can do is just copy this. Well, I'll just change the color on the right. I'm just going to drag this all the way until it's white. Okay. And then let's just center this. Okay. And I'm just going to leave my icon like that. And then on the left, again, I'm going to just select the background and hide it. And that's how it looks. So let's go ahead and copy again, this arrow and then come here select this icon and paste it. But in this case, let's change the vector color to be black. So I'm just going to drag this in here. This is going to be used for light mode. On the left, I'm going to hide the background and I can see a preview of how this is going to look using a white background. All right, so now that we are happy with our design, we can start exporting everything. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do to export this is select the icon and just hide the grid. Let's do the same for all of these icons. So let's select this and hide the grid. Okay, then I'm going to select this tree by pressing shift and click on each square. On the right, we can scroll all the way down and press export and export. I'm going to select my application, which is split is and then assets. You can create a folder for icons if you want to. Let's actually go ahead and do that. I'm going to say icons. And then inside icons, I'm going to save these images. Okay, so I'm going to go to my project and you can see that now I have this folder called icons. And actually the name is a bit different, but we can change it. So I'm going to say iOS dark and iOS tinted. Okay, now let's bring the Android adaptive icon. I'm going to select this square and then on the right, I'm going to just export this. Now notice that in the preview, we don't have a background for the adaptive icon. Again, this is because we're going to set the background on the configuration. So let's go ahead and just export this. And it's going to be called adaptive icon, but it's going to be inside the icons folder. So let's go ahead and save this. Cool. So now let's do the same for this splash screen. Notice that this is a PNG as well with no background. Let's go ahead and export. And I'm going to call this one splash icon light. And let's do the same for dark. Again, notice that we don't have any background. So let's just go ahead and export this. And now we have all the assets that we need for our configuration. So let's go ahead and set them. So in my project, I'm going to go to my app.config.ts. In this case, I have an app.config.ts, but you might have an app.json. And that's the place where you want to set all these variables. So we have this property icon, but actually we can customize this further for each platform. So we can actually override this by coming down here into the iOS section and inside iOS object, I'm going to type icon. And then this can take actually an object which can specify the dark light and tinted paths of these assets. So let's add the path is going to be assets icons and then iOS dark. So let's do the same for light and tinted. Okay, let's hit save and that should do it. Now let's scroll down to Android. Now Android already has an adaptive icon object and you can set these properties as you can see here. So first of all, we have the foreground image 
And this is the path as well for our Android icon. So let's go ahead and change this to be icons and then adaptive icon. So yeah, I'm going to update these three paths. Now the monochrome image, actually we can act reutilize the same uh, foreground image and that is going to make our application um, compatible with tinted icons on Android. And we're going to see that in a moment. I uh, just go ahead and set the same value in here. Now for the background image, uh, you can have a background image if you prefer, but actually this property is going to overwrite this background color property. So you can set this with an image or we can just go ahead and delete this option and set the background manually. So in this case, and by default, it's going to be white, which is what we want in this case for our design. So let's go ahead and hit save. And that should do it for the icon on Android. Now let's configure the plugin for Expo Splash Screen. So by default, Expo Splash Screen comes with this uh, splash icon. So let's go ahead and modify the pad. In this case, Assets, Icons, Splash Icon. Now in this case, uh, I want to use the actually the dark icon because if we see the dark icon, this is going to have a white background. So we need to see it. Um, you might want to change the name of the icon if you prefer. Now I'm going to set the uh, background color to be white. Now this uh, splash screen plugin accepts a image width property and a resize mode. So in this case, I want to contain and the image has to be 200. Um, I think that's a max for Android. If you go over 200 for Android, it's going to actually clip the icon. So be careful with that. You can experiment with the, the sizes if you prefer. Now going to the documentation of splash screen, we can see that we have this dark object that we can specify as well. So let's go back to our project and do that. So I'm going to add this dark object down here. And in this case, I want to use light. Now notice that in this case, we are setting the background to be black, right? So in this case, we're going to be using this with a, a black background. Cool. Now this is going to work for Android and iOS. Now, if you would need to specify um, a different configuration for each platform, you can actually use an iOS object and then specify the same properties as well as an Android object and then specify custom configuration for each platform. And you can see that actually here in the documentation, we have this Android and iOS properties that basically is an object containing the same properties that you can specify for each specific platform. Okay, now that we have all these values set up, we are ready to test this on real devices. By the way, this is very important. To test this, you need to create a standalone application or a production build. Otherwise, we won't have the same feeling of our icon and splash screen on production environments. This is why I have here my real iPhone device and my real Android device. So let's start building this. I'm going to be using EAS to create a preview build for my application. So I'm going to be using the preview profile for building my application, which has a distribution internal. And if you want to learn more about EAS uh, build profiles, I'm going to leave some videos down here in case you need a refresher. So yeah, let's go ahead and say build preview and hit enter. I'm going to build for Android and iOS. Okay, so now in this case, I have to, you know, enter my credentials with Apple so that I can install this on my real device. And I already have registered this iPhone, so we should be good. Okay, guys, and after a moment, our builds are ready. So the next thing that I'm going to do is install this on my devices. So let me just go ahead and move this to the left so that we can see the iPhone. Okay, so on my Android, I'm going to scan this QR. This is going to take me to the uh, dashboard where I can get this APK and install it directly on my device. Okay, let's go ahead and open it. Cool. And now I can see actually my icon, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and install it. All right. Now, if I go to my home screen, you can see that the icon looks like that. And if I open my application, I can see the splash screen displaying correctly. And I have this nice fade out. Cool. So I'm going to close the app and then I'm going to go to my iPhone and let's install it. So I'm going to scan this QR code and open this and it's going to ask me to install it. So this should install the application and I should see it here. Okay, and it looks very nice. Let's go ahead and move it to the home screen. I'm going to put it right here. Okay, and that's how it looks on iOS. And let's open it. We can see the uh, splash screen is working fine. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and close the app. So on my iPhone, if I edit and customize this and I select dark, you can see that my icon changed automatically using my variant that I set, set up here. So let me go ahead and close this. So in this case, we're using the dark one, but let's go ahead and select tinted. 
And as you notice, it looks amazing. So in this case, the user can select the color. And as you notice, the white pixels that we created are being overrided by this color that the user is going to select. All right, and that's how it looks. So let's open this. We have the dark splash screen. And if I switch to light mode, we should be able to see the light splash screen. So this is working fine. Now let's see how the tinted icons are going to look on Android. So on Android, you can long press on the screen and then select wallpaper style. And you notice that we have theme icons as well. So if I turn this on, because we set this monochrome image, and if I go out, uh, you notice that my icon is totally compatible with, um, with this, and I can actually tweak these variables. So for example, let's go ahead and select something different. For example, this blue. And let's go out and you can see that my icon is totally compatible, which, uh, for example, if you see the shopping list icon here, um, I didn't specify the monochrome image and it's not compatible with the theme icons. Now, the splash screen, this is how it looks on Android. We have the nice fade in. And if I change to dark theme and open again, you can see that we have the dark splash screen working fine as well. So as you can see, setting up icons and splash screen is pretty easy. And you can customize this further if you want to. For example, if you want to change the background color, you, you can just come here and change it. But just keep in mind that if you change any of the configuration inside this file, you're going to need to create a new build to test this out. Now, before we finish, I want to show you the configuration that I have for this splash screen. Basically, I just took the example from the documentation. I'm using the latest version of splash screen. And first of all, I'm just setting the prevent auto hide async, which is going to set the splash visible while we fetch resources. Now, something that I really like about the new version of splash screen is that allows us to have this animation of fade. Once we are done loading stuff, we can fade out and we are actually able to see this on um, the iPhone, for example, let me just restart the app open and you notice that we have this nice fade once we finish loading. So that looks amazing. You can tweak the duration and you can turn this off if you prefer. Now, another cool thing about this splash screen is that allows you to basically show this splash screen while we are fetching data. And in this case, I don't, I'm not fetching anything, but actually I have a quick timeout that is just simulating that we are fetching something and I'm, I have just a, a timeout of two seconds and you can increase this if you want to see your splash screen for longer or just delete it if you want to uh, be able to load the application faster. But for testing, I would say it's great. Otherwise, the, the splash screen is going to show super quickly. But yeah, just to keep that in mind. And you can also, you know, come here and load your fonts. If you want to fetch data uh, before you hide the splash screen, you can do that as well in here. And once you are done, you can, uh, you know, call this splash screen dot hide. This is going to hide the splash screen and show your home screen. So in this case, we have this callback that is just checking out that the app is ready. And actually we are using a view down here to validate that the view has loaded and then we can hide the splash screen. And that's all the configuration for a splash screen, guys. And that's it for this lesson, guys. We learned how to create modern and beautiful icons that support the latest features of iOS and Android, as well as how to create a splash screen icon for dark and light mode. Supporting all these variants in your application definitely improves the user experience and makes your application feel more native. I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope as well that you have fun designing your icon. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down here if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.